oh, oh, Mr. Chairman, my colleagues on the Presidential uh, Tax Force, and uh, INEC Chairman, I understand, is around. And uh, other guests, distinguished and gentlemen, you know everybody is a masquerade now, so you you cannot really recognize. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Chairman, and the House once again. I had to rush down from the engagement we are having with um, Juhesu. You know, yesterday we had an eight hour engagement with the National Association of Resident Doctors, and today uh, it, it's still on. The engagement with Juhesu is still on, and uh, I'll probably have to go back there. But when I understand that the minister may not be here, I decided to just quickly rush down. So my apology once again. Uh, today is 10th of September 2020. The total number of positive cases recorded in Nigeria is 55,632. Of a total of 433,206 samples tested. In the last 24 hours, we recorded 176 positive cases out of 2,494 samples tested. We continue to record low positivity rate, even as the number of samples tested has increased. While this is a cheering development, it will be presumptuous to conclude that the disease is reducing. This is because, as of today, not many states are testing. We shall therefore ensure that testing continues in all the states until we reach our delay target. 10% of the positive cases are children and adolescents, with more than half of them in the age bracket of 10 to 18 years. It is therefore pertinent at this point to renew the warning of the Presidential Tax Force on the reopening of schools so as not to expose our children to the risk of infection. In our meeting with the Chief Medical Directors and Medical Directors of the Federal Teaching Hospitals and Medical and Specialist Hospitals last week, we stressed the need for them to work in synergy with the state governments to ensure a coordinated response. The meeting also provided an opportunity for the medical directors to exchange notes and share experience. Important components on COVID-19 response, such as laboratory testing, home-based care, psychosocial implications of COVID-19, challenges associated with COVID-19 case management were discussed. A critical and important outcome of the meeting was the resolve of the medical directors to complement the efforts of the state governments in the fight against the pandemic. They also stressed the need for continued routine services in order not to erode the gains we have made in other areas of health. This was also underscored in our meeting with the Honorable Commissioners of Health on Tuesday, September 1st, 2020, it is in this regard that a countrywide deployment of community volunteers to intensify contact tracing where possible and active case finding supported by various partners that are working with us. This morning, we had the honor of addressing the meeting of the Northern Traditional Leaders Committee on Primary Healthcare Delivery with the Presidential Force, Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19. You are happy to know that the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency still enjoys the confidence and strong support of the committee. The pivotal role traditional and religious leaders played in building community trust and acceptance of the oral polio vaccine was a game changer. We therefore hope to leverage upon this advantage to halt community transmission of COVID-19. Before closing, let me just reiterate 
Some of you must have heard on the news a couple of days ago that uh, the Russians supplied us with some vaccines. This is absolutely false. The Russian ambassador to Nigeria visited in company of the deputy head of mission, and all they did was to just bring a memoir, which is a kind of diplomatic communication, to let us know that, uh, well, they are working on a vaccine, and it's still in the thought phase of clinical trial. Usually you have three phases, the first phase, the second, and then the third, which is the last phase, where you now have several thousands of volunteers being administered with the vaccine. And that does not end the process. They still have to be followed for about a year to see whether complications or side effects will manifest. So as at this point in time, that vaccine is yet to get to that stage. So talk less of being released even in, in um, Russia. So we needed to correct that, and I think the Honorable Minister and myself, uh, we, we, we did that to correct that impression. And even when the vaccine is ready at all, it will still be subjected to our own processes here. That's where we have NAVDAC, we have National Institute of Pharmaceutical Research and Development. The vaccines will be analyzed, it will be checked for safety, and of course the issue of efficacy. Because vaccines are things that you give mass application. You, are, you apply them to a large number of people. So you cannot afford to take chances. So you need to check and establish the safety. And in so doing, you want to look at the various segments of the society. The children, adults, the elderly, and of course those with um, comorbidities. You want to be sure that is it safe to apply to those and will administer this to those who have uh, diabetes, who have heart disease, have uh, hypertension, liver disease, kidney disease, and all that. These are all the things that you need to check and establish before you can say this vaccine is good or not. And at the last count, we have close to about 230 vaccine candidates. And of course, this race for releasing vaccine has gone beyond human race, but rat race. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Minister of State for Health. Dear colleagues, I now invite to the podium the Chairman of INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, to update us on the preparations for elections. <laughs> 